Now we are going to discuss about beats and we are not going to discuss about Dr. Dre beats, you know that. We are going to discuss about beats in the context of physics, all right? Now, what are beats? Let's forget that for now. For now. Let's talk about interference, something you already know. What is interference? Interference is when two waves come like that, right? And they add up, right? That's what interference is. And then all this theory and mathematics of interference which we derived was nothing but saying that at any point in space, you can determine what amplitude the resultant wave will have if you know the phase difference. If it so happens that the phase difference is an integral multiple of 2 pi, then the amplitude would add up. If it uh, yeah, interferes that way, then in that case it will yes cancel up. right? So that's what interference is. A difference in phase determining the variation in amplitude. Now imagine this. You're not moving in space. You don't move in space. You're fixed somewhere. Like you are probably while watching this. Something like this happens. I send a sound towards you, a sound wave towards you with a particular frequency, okay? And if I send another sound wave towards you with the same frequency and completely in phase, right? When it hits your ear, at that point, both the waves are in phase. What will happen? They will both add up constructively, right? And even if the time passes, their addition is always constructive, right? There's no change in their addition. They always have a constructive formation, right? So if both of them add up, yeah, they will, it'll look something like this. What we are showing you right now is the P versus X graph moving in time. Now, let's shift our focus to a value of X, a particular value of X. Of course, that is your ear, that point E there. Let's see how pressure varies in time at that point. You can see what are the different values of pressure at different points in time at your ear E. Observe that this is the first sound wave which we are representing by the color red. And this is the second sound wave which we are representing by the color blue. Also notice that both of them are completely in phase. And this is how their addition would look like. Phase. And this is how their addition. Now, if I do this, if I send a wave towards you, another wave of the same frequency, but if I keep it out of phase, then what will happen? The sounds will cancel, right? The amplitudes completely vanish. Now, if I do something like this, imagine that I'm sending a wave towards you, a sound wave with some frequency, okay? Now there's another sound wave which is also coming towards you and both of them are of course interfering. And I have designed, because uh, I also know a little bit of engineering. So I have designed, let's say a knob, I'm calling it the phase knob. And what I'm doing with it is that I'm slowly turning this phase knob from zero to 180 to 360, right? All these uh, angles, I'm slowly changing it, which does what it changes the phase of the second wave and very slowly what will happen so you were just sitting there chilling and you hear one of the waves coming to you and the other wave was also coming initially let's say they were in phase because this knob was at zero and now as the knob starts moving what will happen the the phase of the other wave starts fluctuating as in like it starts increasing and uh, you hear that initially you were able to hear a really loud sound because they were in phase and now the loudness is going down and down and down and down and down there would come a time and they will be completely out of phase, in which case you can't hear anything. And then again, because cycle continues, again when, when the knob goes to 360, again you get back that amplitude, right? That, that peak. And if I if I continue moving that knob, what do you, what will you find? You'll find that. Sitting at the same point, right, without moving, what you can hear is that the amplitude slowly increases and then slowly decreases, then increases, then decreases, then increases, then, de then decreases. And what does uh, increasing and decreasing of amplitude correspond to? It corresponds to increasing and decreasing intensity. And what does increasing and decre decreasing intensity correspond to? Yes, it corresponds to the loudness. So what you'll hear is the loudness of the sound increasing then decreasing, then increasing, then decreasing, then increasing, then decreasing. You'll hear sort of like, something like that. Mm -hmm, something like that. I'm not able to do it. 
you will hear beats this is what we call beats right and let's look at it uh, in a little more depth so what's basically happening here is that the phase difference at a particular point is changing right now these two waves would have some phases right the phase of let's say the first wave is this and the phase of the second wave is that okay and i see that i have fixed x for both of them that is their position can't change so x is fixed for both of them and also time is running equally for both both the waves right so t is same for both of them and x is fixed that leaves us with only one thing which is the frequency right if it so happens that the phases or the phase difference between these two waves are changing the only thing which can change is the frequency or the wavelength because if frequency changes wavelength will change because we are talking about the same medium the speed of the wave would remain constant all right so basically what ha what's happening is as i'm turning that phase knob the 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 wave which is re reaching to your ears at that point the the frequency of that wave is a little shifted okay now i have a graph like this all right uh this particular sound wave has a particular frequency right and if i overlap on it another sound wave with a slightly different frequency something like this you can see the difference in their peaks you can see that initially they sort of try to make a constructive interference but over there they are making a destructive interference right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add both of them if i add both of them and you know how to add graphs right? that's that's a very simple thing let's add both of them what what happens you see a pattern like that and please notice please notice that i'm talking about this graph in terms of time so on the x axis you have time okay so you have fixed at a position and as time moves you would see the fluctuation in amplitude and as the amplitude moves yeah hear that and then it decreases increases yeah that is what you are going to hear now we can do this very simply we have something called as tuning forks we have heard of tuning forks right so if i take a tuning fork of a particular frequency and i strike it yeah that sound and if i take a tuning fork of a little different frequency let's say a slightly different frequency if i sound it can you make out a difference of course we can't make out a difference right and if i strike both these tuning forks together what will happen let's hear that yeah can you hear that that wobble that is what we call as beats now you are sitting at a particular point right your ears are not moving what is moving yeah those two waves are coming to your ears and they have a slightly different frequency because of which the interference in at the point at at the point where your ears detect it let me not say it again and again is changing as in like the amplitude is varying with time okay and uh, you hear this beautiful thing which we call beats in physics